I'd like to bring the land use hearings to order. County manager. Yes, sir. Um, we have two items this morning for land use cases. Our first one's a PLN 2014-00038. It's our oil and gas regulation amendments, and um, Joelle Greenland is here to talk uh, through that. Oh, is, is this the... Okay. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, uh, oil and gas regulation amendments. We are planning staff is recommending that case PLN 2014 um, be continued until January 6, 2015, in order to continue working with the oil and gas industry in executing an agreeable memorandum of understanding. So, do you need an approval? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I do a motion to go ahead and remove it, postpone it. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Okay, so um, our second item uh, this morning then will be uh, PLN 2014 0033 uh, marijuana regulation amendment. Uh, Michael Weaver, you gonna take the lead uh, in our planning department. Thank you. This is case number PLN 2014-33, Marijuana Regulation Amendments. These are amendments to chapters 3, 4, and 11 of the Adams County Development Standards and Regulations concerning the regulation of medical and retail marijuana establishments. The proposed changes to the Adams County Development Standards <clears throat> and Regulations would establish time, place, manner, and number restrictions on medical marijuana centers, medical marijuana infused product manufacturers, and medical marijuana optional premises cultivation operations, as well as retail marijuana stores, retail marijuana product manufacturing facilities, retail marijuana cultivation facilities, and retail marijuana testing facilities in unincorporated Adams County. Currently, Adams County has a prohibition in place on all medical marijuana businesses since December of 2010, and a temporary ban in place on all retail marijuana establishments since August of 2013, and set to expire on December 31st, 2014. In the event that the Adams County Board of County Commissioners takes action to lift the prohibition on medical marijuana businesses, and or allows the temporary ban on retail marijuana establishments to expire, these regulations would, if passed, serve as the land use regulations <clears throat> for such establishments throughout unincorporated Adams County. In November 2000, voters passed Amendment 20 to the state's constitution, effectively legalizing limited amounts of medical marijuana for patients and their primary caregivers. The Colorado Medical Marijuana Code was passed by the General Assembly in 2010. Local governments were granted the authority to allow or prohibit dispensaries. Medical marijuana establishments fall under the authority of the state's Medical Marijuana Enforcement Division, as well as the relevant local government. On November 6, 2012, the voters passed Amendment 64, which amended the Colorado Constitution by legalizing the personal cultivation, possession, and use of recreational marijuana by persons 21 years of age or older. Under Amendment 64, local governments are allowed to adopt local regulations governing the time, place, manner, and number of retail marijuana establishments. Rules related to the Colorado Retail Marijuana Code were established in September 2013. Retail marijuana establishments fall under the authority of the state's Marijuana Enforcement Division, as well as the relevant local government. The purpose of the Adams County Marijuana Regulation Amendments is to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of Adams County residents, provide for sound practices through the control of the time, place, manner, and number of medical and retail marijuana establishments in the unincorporated areas of Adams County, implement local rules for new business uses in accordance with state rules, regulations, and laws, and foster a more diverse and well-balanced economic base in Adams County. A county task force researched medical and retail marijuana regulations in other Colorado jurisdictions and conducted meetings with representatives from the state of Colorado's Medical Marijuana Enforcement Division, the Tri-County Health Department, the District Attorney's Office, the County Sheriff's Office, 
local fire districts, other local officials, the marijuana industry, and citizens with respect to the proposed amendments. The task force met regularly and reviewed various proposals for new marijuana establishment regulations, which included GIS analysis of more than a dozen combinations of location criteria to analyze the various potential spatial characteristics of the regulations. Among the criteria analyzed were distances to schools, playgrounds and parks, daycare centers, rehabilitation facilities, correctional facilities, and residentially zoned or used properties. Based on this analysis, the task force selected a set of criteria known as scenario number 14 that is described below. Medical marijuana centers and retail marijuana stores would be permitted in the C3, C4, and C5 commercial zone districts and the I1, I2, and I3 industrial zone districts. Medical marijuana infused products manufacturers, retail marijuana product manufacturing facilities, and retail marijuana testing facilities would be permitted in the I1, I2, and I3 industrial zone districts. Medical marijuana optional premises cultivation operations and retail marijuana cultivation facilities would be permitted in the C3, C4, and C5 commercial zone districts for dual grow cell operations, the I1, I2, and I3 industrial zone districts, and the A3 agricultural zone district on parcels of at least 35 acres in size for grow only operations in generally more urban parts of the county, generally west of Imboden Road and also along the I-70 corridor. No marijuana establishment would be allowed within 1,000 feet of any existing school, state licensed daycare home and daycare center, playground and public housing facility. No marijuana establishment would be allowed within 100 feet of any existing house of worship, youth center, public swimming pool, video arcade, alcohol or drug rehabilitation facility, group home for the developmentally disabled, halfway house or correctional facility. No marijuana establishment would be allowed within 50 feet of any residentially zoned or used property. No medical marijuana center or retail marijuana store would be allowed within 750 feet of any other such facility. A new term, marijuana establishment, is defined. A marijuana establishment means both a medical marijuana business and or a retail marijuana establishment as defined by the Colorado Department of Revenue Marijuana Enforcement Division. Here are our scenario maps. This is showing urban southwest Adams County. Those parcels that are in green, gray, or red would be um, those potential eligible parcels in the southwestern portion of the county. This map shows other potentially eligible parcels in the northern sections of Adams County. And this map shows potential eligible parcels within the I-76 corridor. This map shows potential eligible parcels within the vicinity of Denver International Airport. And this map shows potential eligible parcels along the I-70 corridor. Under this scenario, there would be 456 potential parcels zoned A3 agricultural, five potential parcels zoned C3 commercial, 34 potential parcels zoned C4 commercial, 32 potential parcels zoned C5 commercial, 236 potential parcels zoned I-1 industrial, 400 potential parcels zoned I-2 industrial, and 197 potential parcels zoned I-3 industrial. In C-3, C-4, and C-5 commercial, only retail sales and limited cultivation would be allowed. The commercial zone districts are intended for commercial retail businesses. In A-3 agricultural, only cultivation would be allowed. This is in keeping with the farming purpose of the A-3 agricultural zone district. In I-1, I-2, and I-3 industrial, testing, cultivation, manufacturing, and retail sales would all be allowed. The intent of the industrial zone districts includes commercial retail, warehousing, manufacturing, storage, and distribution related uses. The county encourages all marijuana establishments to develop properties in harmony with the surrounding area and to enhance design elements of buildings and properties accordingly. The county would impose all standard building permit and change in use permit review fees for marijuana applications. All marijuana establishments in unincorporated Adams County would have to adhere to the hours of operation established per state statutes. A marijuana referral agency forum was held on Thursday, November 6, 2014. The referral agencies in attendance recommended that the county make any necessary changes to other local codes and consider the need for fire alarms and sprinklers in marijuana establishments. 
The Mapleton School District voiced its opposition to any type of marijuana establishment in unincorporated Adams County. Excel Energy, the E-470 Public Highway Authority, the Town of Castle Rock, the Strasburg Parks and Recreation District, Arapahoe County, and Weld County all have no comments or concerns with the proposed regulation amendments. The City of Commerce City recommends collaboration and a strategic approach to land uses within municipalities' growth boundaries, that a public process be conducted, and that the county's regulations be mindful of potential impacts to residential neighborhoods in the city. The county welcomes comments and feedback from all adjacent jurisdictions and recognizes that various local governments in and around the county have differing regulations for marijuana establishments. If these land use regulations are approved, then the Board of County Commissioners may consider a marijuana licensing program in the future. The City of Brighton sought clarification as to the meaning of standalone, notes that the city prohibits marijuana establishments, requests that hemp farming be a conditional use, and asks whether the county will regulate homegrown marijuana operations. So the term standalone means marijuana cultivation establishments that only grow marijuana with no retail sales component. Hemp farming is regulated by the state of Colorado Department of Agriculture. The county does not contemplate local restrictions on hemp cultivation beyond allowing it on any parcel where farming is a permitted use. The county is not contemplating the imposition of restrictions on citizens' constitutional rights to grow a limited number of marijuana plants in, in their own homes in accordance with state laws, rules, and regulations. The Tri-County Health Department recommends that the county provide information about best practices for pollution prevention and energy and water conservation related to marijuana grow facilities to owners and operators. Tri-County recommends that the, that the county include youth centers among the list of uses that are to be at least 1,000 feet rather than 100 feet from marijuana establishments. The county appreciates Tri-County's recommendations and looks forward to continuing to work together on these issues. The South Adams County Fire District recommends that the county make any nece necessary adjustments to the building and fire codes before accepting applications for marijuana establishments. And the county does appreciate the fire district's recommendations. School District 27J stated it would like to see language stating that marijuana establishments be set back at least 500 feet from any educational facility. The county's proposed regulations establish a 1,000 foot setback of marijuana establishments from educational facilities. The Adams County Fire Protection District states that marijuana establishments should be required to undergo an electrical inspection, to obtain a change in use permit, and to follow the adopted fire and building codes. In addition, the fire district states that the 50-foot separation requirement from the residences may not be sufficient to prevent odors from bothering the neighbors. Marijuana establishments will need to obtain either building permit or change in use permit approval in order to proceed. All applicable building and fire codes will need to be adhered to by marijuana establishments just like any other business. Per the Adams County Development Standards and Regulations, Section 413.7, every use shall be operated so does not create a malodorous condition defined as an odor reading greater than the permitted odor standard allowed by state statutes or regulations. Failure to comply with odor regulations by any business would require action taken by the county's code compliance division of the Neighborhood Services Department. Public open houses were convened on Wednesday, November 12th, 2014, and on Monday, November 17th, 2014, at the Adams County Government Center Public Hearing Room from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. on both of those nights. Attendees sought clarity on the proposed zoning and setback requirements, and in general, the sentiment expressed was for fewer regulations of marijuana establishments. It was discussed that marijuana establishments tend to pay higher rents for building and warehouse space, Marijuana business owners expressed a desire for opportunities to make business investments in the county. Citizen David Phillips states he is concerned that allowing marijuana establishments will lead to more illegal drug use and more crime in his neighborhood, that organized crime is increasing in Denver County, that more mental health services will be needed, that there's no proven medicinal value to marijuana, and that marijuana users ignore driving under the influence laws. The purpose of the marijuana regulation amendments is to establish appropriate zoning, setbacks, and other land use controls to ensure the orderly and efficient integration of such establishments into unincorporated Adams County should the Board of County Commissioners take action to allow them. Citizen Bob Briggs states that marijuana cultivation, retail sales, and manufacturing of marijuana products should be allowed in the A1 and A2 agricultural zone districts so as to take advantage of existing greenhouses in those areas. 
At this time, staff is not recommending the inclusion of A1 and A2 agricultural parcels for potential marijuana establishments. The purpose of the A1 and A2 zone districts is to provide a rural living district with limited farming. Staff estimates that a dozen or so greenhouses are located in unincorporated Adams County, primarily in urban areas. Some of these greenhouses could potentially be rezoned to commercial or industrial, whereupon they could potentially house marijuana cultivation facilities, provided that all applicable setbacks are met. Citizen Maggie King expresses concern about marijuana establishments along South Federal Boulevard particularly the only 750-foot separation requirement between retail marijuana establishments. Ms. King is concerned that marijuana establishments in this area could detract from efforts to create a more positive image in this gateway area to Adams County. Staff notes that the purpose of the 750-foot separation requirement between retail marijuana establishments is to ensure they are spread out along commercial corridors and not overly concentrated in some areas. Staff encourages compatible building design for marijuana establishments that is harmonious with the surrounding urban context. A marijuana industry forum was held on Thursday, November, November 6, 2014. The industry was interested in learning more about the potential for starting businesses in Adams County. They are interested in learning more about the application and licensing process and cultivating marijuana in greenhouses and all agricultural zone districts and would like to know the process by which the setbacks between retail stores are established. The industry also stated that within their buildings, the area devoted to point of sale is quite limited and that the majority of the building is devoted to grow rooms and storage. Therefore, they suggested the county may want to rethink the provision whereby in C3, C4, and C5 commercial, the cultivation component can be no more than twice the size of the store or retail component. Dynamic Growth LLC suggests Adams County follows the marijuana program implemented by the city of Aurora and establish a strong, well-funded division for enforcement of any rules pertaining to marijuana establishments that the county chooses to implement. Marijuana Mama LLC requests that marijuana cultivation also be allowed in the A1 and A2 agricultural zone districts, that marijuana manufacturing be allowed in the C4 and C5 commercial zone districts, that marijuana manufacturing be eligible for conditional use approval in certain circumstances, and that the setback between homes and marijuana manufacturing businesses be reduced. This case was heard on November 20th, 2014 by the Planning Commission, which recommended adoption of the proposed regulations in a unanimous decision. During the public hearing, two people voiced their opposition to marijuana establishments, and seven people voiced their support for marijuana establishments. Two people shared testimony about the medicinal benefits of cannabis for people with medical conditions. Three people stated that the proposed 1,500 foot setback between marijuana manufacturers and residences was too strict. The Planning Commission recommended that that particular setback be reduced. Staff therefore proposes a 50 foot setback between marijuana manufacturers and residentially zoned or used properties. This is the same as applies to all other marijuana businesses. Adherence to the fire and building codes will ensure that marijuana manufacturing businesses meet all applicable life safety standards, the same as for all other businesses. One person stated the proposed 750 foot setback between marijuana stores was too big. Another stated it was too small. The Planning Commission considered that setback to be appropriate since it would prevent the clustering of marijuana stores in specific areas, including commercial corridors within unincorporated Adams County. The Planning Commission further recommends changing the setback for marijuana establishments from houses of worship, youth centers, and public swimming pools from 100 feet to 1,000 feet. The Planning Commission felt these entities shared characteristics with schools, playgrounds, parks, and public housing facilities that fall under the 1,000 foot setback from marijuana establishments. The 100 foot setback from youth centers, public swimming pools, and video arcades stems from provisions within the 1970 Controlled Sub Substances Act, establishing areas of enhanced federal penalties within those parameters. Upon examination of the proposed changes to the stricter 1,000 foot setbacks from houses of worship, youth centers, and public swimming pools, staff found that this would severely restrict the number of potential parcels from approximately 1,360 to only approximately 386, and further restrict the number of potential retail marijuana stores from approximately 25 to only approximately five. 
Staff recommends keeping the original 100-foot setback from houses of worship, youth centers, and public swimming pools, and applying a 50-foot setback between marijuana manufacturers and residentially zoned or used properties, consistent with all other marijuana establishments. In summary, staff's recommendation, scenario 14, results in approximately 1,360 potential parcels for marijuana establishments, which would further allow for approximately 25 potential retail marijuana stores in unincorporated Adams County. This estimate is a bit lower than staff's earlier assessment due to refined mapping analysis and will ultimately depend on where retail marijuana stores end up locating and then establishing the 750 foot buffers around those particular parcels. The Planning Commission's recommendation, Scenario 15, results in approximately 386 potential parcels for marijuana establishments, which would further allow for approximately five potential retail marijuana stores in unincorporated Adams County. Staff believes the regulations need to allow for a reasonable number of options for would-be investors in the marijuana industry, and that Scenario 14 offers the best alternative while still safeguarding the health, safety, and welfare of Adams County citizens and prudently controlling for the orderly time, place, manner, and number of marijuana establishments in the county. Staff further recommends that the BOCC consider capping the number of marijuana establishments to a total of 10 during the first year, 2015, of allowing such establishments in order to ensure that the county can integrate these new businesses into the county in a controlled and coordinated manner to the benefit of all members of the Adams County community. Options for the Board of County Commissioners. Option number one would be to adopt staff's recommendation, scenario 14, which would allow retail, grow, manufacturing, and testing facilities in all industrial zone districts, allow retail stores and limited grow facilities in the C3, C4, and C5 commercial zone districts, and allow grow facilities on parcels of at least 35 acres in size in the A3 agricultural zone district with the setbacks below. A 1,000 foot setback from schools, state licensed daycare homes and daycare centers, playgrounds, parks, and public housing facilities, a 100-foot setback from places of worship, youth centers, public swimming pools, video arcades, alcohol or drug rehabilitation facilities, group home for the developmentally disabled, halfway house or correctional facility. A 50-foot setback from any residentially zoned or used property, a 750-foot setback between marijuana stores, and a cap of three marijuana stores, three marijuana grow facilities, three marijuana manufacturing facilities, and one marijuana testing facility through December 31st of 2015. Option number two for the Board of County Commissioners includes adopting the Planning Commission's recommendation, which is scenario 15, which is the same as staff's recommendation except for the application of a 1,000 foot rather than a 100 foot setback for marijuana establishments from houses of worship, youth centers, and public swimming pools. Option number three would be to adopt an alternative version of the regulations with or without capping the number of marijuana establishments in unincorporated Adams County during the first year. Option number four would be to not adopt marijuana regulation amendments at this time. Now, if the BOCC approves a cap for the first year of allowing marijuana establishments, then the following would be implemented. Pursuant to the Adams County Development Standards and Regulations, the Director of Planning and Development has the authority to establish application and submittal requirements and schedules for review of applications. As such, the Planning and Development Department will hold a lottery to determine who would be able to apply for a marijuana establishment. Lottery applications would be accepted from January 2nd, 2015 until January 22nd, 2015. On January 27th, 2015, the lottery drawing would be held. A random drawing of 50 names would be drawn. The first three marijuana growers, the first three marijuana sellers, the first three marijuana manufacturers, and the first marijuana testing facility selected from the lottery would have the first opportunity to apply for building or change in use permits and would have six months in order to do so. During that time, those selected would also be required to obtain the applicable marijuana license from the state of Colorado. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have questions on staff's report? Clarification question on uh, the requirement for a change in use building slash permit building permit. Um, you're assuming someone's gonna come into a facility and they have to you know, build it out in order to do something like this. Um, and that the use 
at that particular facility. Obviously, in this particular case, we, we don't allow any now, so there wouldn't be any marijuana at all. Um, so they would have to get a change in use permit in order to allow that use. But ultimately, this is a use by right, effectively, in these zone districts if you meet this criteria. That's essentially what you're saying, right? That's correct. Okay. So as long as it meets the criteria, then staff would determine, you know, whether or not it, uh, it, it uh, you know, is allowed at a particular location. Correct. Okay. So what's the difference between a change in use and a conditional use permit? A change in use permit is very similar to our building permit process. So it's really just an administrative item. It takes a few weeks to process through the various county departments. Um, essentially, it's you use the same building permit application. You check up different boxes as change in use. A conditional use permit process is much more involved. It requires external referral agencies and two public hearings, one before the Planning Commission and one before the Board of County Commissioners. Right. And so when do we decide when you use a conditional use permit as opposed to a change in use permit? In our, regardless of this particular issue, but just generally speaking in the rest of our code, how do we distinguish between those two? Sure. <coughs> Avel Montoya, Planning and Development Director. Thank you for that question. Um, the answer is the conditional use permit parameters are usually based on potential adverse conditions of a business uh, throughout the county regardless of the zone district. Uh, for example, um, some manufacturing um, uses that may have a high level of noise or traffic uh, may require a conditional use permit in uh, zone districts where it would abut a residential use. And that would be a discretionary approval by the county, uh, whereas the change in use permit, as you had asked, is, uh, like you said, if you meet the criteria, the setbacks and um, the building and fire code standards, uh, then you will be issued a building permit and begin operations. So if a so if, uh, particular use you know, is, uh, has potential impact on it, you know, maybe it's smell, you know, maybe it's noise, you know, maybe it's traffic, you know, um, you know, uh, I, I can think of a number of different examples um, of specific uses. Uh, then we generally uh, do a conditional use permit. And so when you're talking about manufacturing and selling marijuana, I don't understand, uh, are we not concerned about those things? Uh, we are concerned about those. Um, we have provided a provision in the code which requires filters and, and or scrubbers uh, to reduce the odors. There are odor standards that any industry, including marijuana, would have to follow to not create nuisances to the neighbors. Um, the conditional use permit is something that is a traditional tool. Uh, in this case, we also weighed some of the state provisions which um, outlined the regulation of marijuana similar to liquor licensing. Um, that does not require conditional use permit hearings, but it does require um, a licensing authority to review it. At this time, the state would be that licensing authority. The county could in the future create our own licensing authority to further review in a public setting marijuana facilities. I, I think there's several se separate issues here. I mean, you've got the manufacturing component of it, you know, which is, I wouldn't say it was similar to, to uh, a liquor store. You know, that would be more similar to a distillery, I guess, you know, from that perspective. So if somebody wanted to put a distillery in, would we require a conditional use permit under certain circumstances? Um, the answer would be yes if it was strictly um, a distillery. Um, in some cases, in some zone districts, some lower case zone districts, uh, in higher zone district, um, uh, areas uh, such as our I-2 or I-3, it most likely would be an allowed use, a permitted use, because of the separation components of some of the residential and uh, industrial areas. Um, here, here, what we're proposing is the minimum of 50 foot setback from uh, residentially zoned or used properties. Um, that would be measured from property line to property line, in addition to some other setbacks that Michael Weaver had presented. Um, in total, based on our analysis, uh, we project a maximum of 25 retail facilities. Um, and in those areas, the grow would be capped at no more than two times the size of the retail front. So those areas where it would be closer to residentially zoned or used properties um, and would have higher traffic volumes, um, those components that would, could be adversely impacting the neighborhood 
would be controlled by virtue of the size of the grow operation. Most of the odors associated with the marijuana industry is gonna come from the grow facilities. Um, the larger the um, grow area, the higher the likelihood of an odor. Um, those would be only allowed in our industrial zone districts and in our agricultural zone districts, which are um, set back even further uh, traditionally uh, from residentially zoned or used property. I, I guess what I don't understand is, is that, is that if we're requiring conditional use permits in many cases for some of these uses that are somewhat similar, uh, why are we treating these businesses differently? That's a good question. Um, you know, if someone were to open a bakery, uh, that could create some odors. Um, that does not require a conditional use permit. Um, that would be allowed in our commercial zone districts and our industrial zone districts. Um, other similar retail uses that may or may not have um, odors that are objectionable to the surrounding area, in most cases would be an allowed use. Um, marijuana in this case would be treated a little bit differently than some of those other traditional retail and infused product or bakery type uh, scenarios. Okay, can I ask a question? Because when we talk about conditional use, um, some of the things that I think about is, you know, we have minimum standards for the certain industries. Um, I'll just use the storage industry for example. Storage industry comes in, they have a, they're in the proper zone, land use, they have the appropriate business, they don't have to get a conditional use permit or from the county. But if they want to exceed what the limitations are designed for within the storage industry, you say they want to stack higher than the eight foot fence or they want to um, load up cars in a certain area without the proper um, clearances, then they would come in for the, for the appropriate conditional use permit. Is that something what we're talking about here is that we're setting the minimum standard if any of these industries come in and they want to say, I want to have this industry or this grow facility here, but I'm going to exceed what your allowable limit is. And so the only way to do that would be to come in and get a conditional use permit. In this particular case for the marijuana establishments, we are not proposing a public hearing in the traditional sense of a possible conditional use permit or a variance. In fact, the regulation is drafted so you could not apply for a variance from these setbacks. Either you meet it or you do not. Um, if the county chooses to have a licensing authority, that would be the venue for potential public hearings on the licensing aspect in the future. And I think that's the, the recommendation from staff, correct me if I'm wrong, is to um, put in the state regulations and review with the limitations that we have for the first year and come back with either a recommendation of that what you just spoke about with the licensing authority is that correct yes the, the staff has been examining other licensing authorities across the state where local um, permits are required um, we plan to continue to study that with the commissioners and our county attorney's office and our county manager's office um, and the idea is just that um, to place a cap for the first year to make sure it's efficiently controlled, to make sure we have enough staff to review the permits that our inspectors are trained and coordinated with other inspectors in the fire district and Tri-County Health if necessary, in order to um, make sure our rules are working the way they are intended to. And if they need to be supplemented, uh, we will be coming back to the commission uh, to discuss a possible licensing authority. Thank you. Do we have other questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about this industry, but I suspect that it's like any other industry and in that there are some entities that are better than others, right? You know, they're either, you know, um, you know, better actors or they're, you know, run better operations or whatever that they happen to be. Um, and, you know, in this lottery situation, we're essentially treating everybody equally. You know, and everybody and one has an equal chance. Now, maybe it's too early in to determine whether or not someone's good or bad because all these companies are new anyway. But, but um, I, I just um, I'm just wondering if it if it makes sense to um, you know try to rate people you know so that you end up with people that are better than others. 
um, or if there's even any way to do that. Does that make sense? It does. Um, the staff and the committee did discuss and debate those type of permitting uh, prospects. Um, ultimately, um, after listening to the industry, talking with the state on some of their um, ideas and experiences, um, we ultimately concluded that the lottery system would be the best to implement for several reasons. Uh, one is once we establish criteria, inevitably there is a person or a group of people weighing that criteria. And in the case of Aurora, could ultimately lead to a lawsuit of decisions being made arbitrarily or capriciously. Uh, in the lottery system, what we accomplish is uh, allowing for the experienced growers and retailers and the new emerging um, businesses that have not operated yet to have the same um, chance to operate in Adams County. And along with that, what we're saying is if we cap it, um, then we won't have a lot of businesses out there that are either all terrible or in between or all good, but rather we can weigh our regulations in, re in regard to how they operate and be able to make adjustments where necessary so that if this is approved and if 2016 there is not a cap or a different number in the cap, um, that the county would have uh, criteria to ensure that the best businesses are those operating in the county, whether that's through a licensing authority or enhanced regulation amendment based on our experience here in the county. So you're, you're concerned in part that if we pick winners and losers, so to speak, you know, our determination as to who the better ones are, then somebody's gonna sue us. Well, our concern is, is, is not just that, that's something that's in the background. Uh, we're also concerned to allow for what I'm gonna call the American dream. This is an emerging industry. Um, there are a lot of people that have spent a lot of time and energy uh, collecting resources, learning about the industry that would like the same chance to operate in Adams County as those that have been established in other jurisdictions. Can I ask the county attorney you know, if she feels that there's a concern about legal action based on you know, doing or not doing a lottery? If, if we want to discuss it in, in detail, I think we should go into executive session, but I think I can say in this forum that in general, I feel like anytime we create processes where staff has a lot of subjectivity in terms of choosing applicants, it creates a legal liability issue. And um, okay. I'm not particularly familiar with it, but I have seen um, a news story about a lawsuit in Aurora over this exact issue. Okay. So. Okay. I understand. Okay, do we have any other questions? I, I have mainly a comment in regards to, you know, picking and choosing. Um, one, I think it's a political hotbed for our staff that is unnecessary. Um, two, uh, there's an opportunity or pro since the process wouldn't necessarily be fair or as far as I'm concerned, open and transparent, um, there's a possibility of some influence being brought into, into the process that might be un not right. Uh, also, when it comes to um, odor, um, I live pretty close to a roasting house in Thornton, Allegra. And there are some mornings that, you know, and I love coffee, but there are some mornings where the odor is pretty bad um, from, from that roasting house. Um, but it is, uh, you know, a lot of people say it's the smell of money. So that is kind of my opinion of, of odor. So thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. We're, we're going to address public comment here in a little bit. We don't take questions from the floor, okay? So at this time, do we have any more questions from the commissioners? No questions. At this time, I'd like to make a statement that there is a sign-up sheet for those of you that would like to make comment. Um, Mr. Moskowitz, I believe, is in possession of the sign-up sheet. If there are people who still wish to sign up to speak, Mr. Moskowitz, where is the, the sign-up sheet? Is there another one in back? There, yes, there is one in the back. So there is another one in back, and he will be checking that sheet. You can sign up on that sheet to talk. We will be giving public comment three minutes for anyone who wants to make a statement. I would ask that if you are making a statement and you are covering ground that has already been covered, please be respectful to those that still need to talk and to our time today. And if you have new information, please bring that new information forward. 
So at this time, Mr. Moskowitz, do we have anyone signed up for public comment? We do. We have seven people who are signed up to speak. And the first one is um, Jim Gerhardt. Mr. Gerhardt, and if you could, when you step to the podium, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Jim Gerhardt, uh, 12711 Colorado Boulevard, City of Thornton. So um, basically, I've, I've heard a lot of discussion about the where of this industry, but not so much about the why or the how. Um, I think that this is a new industry. This is uncharted territory for the country. This uh, is a particular product that invites a lot of black market diversion. It invites a lot of public health and public safety problems. Why are we so quickly wanting to get into this? Um, there are a couple of reports here that the commissioners may or may not be aware of that were done by the state last year that detail an audit of the Marijuana Enforcement Division of the state of Colorado prior to the full legalization but under medical marijuana. These are not favorable. The state of Colorado is having a tremendous amount of problem regulating this particular industry. Uh, and the industry is growing so fast, by some estimates, we have more of these retail outlets in the state than we do Starbucks. Why do we need more of them? Why does, this, why does Adams County need to be part of this right now? Have we truly figured out the infrastructure that's important for this? Do we think we've got this nailed down to the point where we're confident we need to jump into this? Or perhaps is it better to extend the moratorium for another period of time, take a little bit of a breather, and pay attention to what's going on in other places where they've, they've gone into the deep end of the pool? If uh, you're also not aware of these reports, uh, this is a, a uh, series of data that have been collected and reported with no analysis. This is strictly raw data talking about public safety, public health, and diversion issues all over the state of Colorado. I brought these for the commissioners if you are interested in these at all, but that's essentially my comments. I'm opposed to this uh, industry moving into Adams County at this particular time. I think we need to slow down and pay a little bit better attention to what's going on where they exist. Could you please hand those reports to our county attorney, Heidi Miller? And thank you very much for your comments. Mr. Moskowitz. Next we have um, Todd Reeves. Mr. Reeves, again, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, commissioners, for hearing me. My name is Todd Reeves. I'm at 13122 Bel Air Drive. Um, I also um, i am not understanding why we want to jump into this so quickly in Adams County. Adams County has done a fantastic job of controlling the businesses and the things that they've done and changing the appearance of Adams County. And I think that with the data and the information that's out there now, uh, we are better off sitting back and learning from the others as this industry grows elsewhere. And instead of being the experimental hotbed for this, allow the other agencies and the other organizations to go through this experiment uh, experimentation phase in determining what the impact's going to be. So I also am opposed to this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Moskowitz. Next, we have Bob Briggs. Mr. Briggs, again, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, Bob Briggs, 5729 West, 115th Avenue, in the county just west of us called Jefferson. I had the opportunity, as all of you know, the, the set where you have sat in my past. So I've, uh, I'm always appreciative of what you do and, and the efforts you go through to make it happen. I'm here today to talk about the greenhouse industry. Uh, when I was sitting where you're at, I had a greenhouse and, and it got put out of business raising cut flowers because of a policy by the federal government on, uh, of all things, a war on drugs. That policy allowed, they did two things. One is they allowed greenhouse construction to take place in Columbia, and the second was they give them favored nation status. And that is what ultimately put the, the cut flower greenhouse production out of business. And so what I want to do today is to encourage the growing of marijuana in greenhouses because one, it's more efficient. And two, it 
provides the opportunity then to create that greenhouse business back in the uh, great county of Adams. Adams County, when I was a county commissioner, the number one greenhouse in the state for, uh, the number one county in the state for greenhouses was Adams County. It needs, it could be reinvigorated with this new opportunity. Now, when you're growing, uh, one of the things I'd like to see is for that A1, A2, because zoning, because that's where most of the greenhouses are located, and I would like to see the opportunity for those greenhouses to have that that uh, blessing to be able to grow greenhouse, be able to grow marijuana in those greenhouses. The other thing, though, if you go to A3, you restrict it to growing, and I think the manufacturing and the testing ought to be added into uh, A3 if you if you do that. And on your lottery, I would love to see you put in place the restriction of one of the three grow operations to be a greenhouse operation rather than potentially all of them be warehouses because it's that greenhouse operation that will, in a year from now or two years from now, be able to be the model for the greenhouses that will come after that. So I would love for you to make a, an adjustment to allow one of the three, at least, of the cultivations to be a greenhouse operation. So that's my request. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Adam O'Donovan. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Aiden O'Donovan, 1450 Judson Drive. And uh, a quick introduction. I'm. Uh, a dispensary owner in North Glen. I, you know, was given an opportunity there after, you know, trying to break into this industry for years, and we're about to get open in a couple months, and I'm really excited about it. Um, and when I heard about Adams County potentially opening up, I talked with uh, my uncle who owns a owns a industrially zoned property, as well as my godmother who has agricultural property, and they both got really excited about it, and you know. Um, we were going to have a, a shop and, a, a, you know, the, a grow to support it and, and uh, you know, a, a chance to succeed. Um, so really the thing I'm here to talk about is this 10 license limit um, that would leave three dispensaries and three uh, grow facilities I, because, I mean, the chances of us getting one and one um, in that lottery are astronomically low. Uh, you know, initially I called the county and verified everything and then this, this kind of 10 foot, uh, 10 location issue kind of came, you know, right out of nowhere. And uh, I'm really asking you to choose option three uh, because I think that 10 is entirely arbitrary. Um, I don't think it was really thought through properly. And you, know, you guys have about 100,000 residents in unincorporated areas of the county. And that's not really to mention all the residents of the town, uh, the towns and communities where they have bands and these people are cannabis users and they have to currently drive all the way to Denver. and. Uh, you know, that that's, they're giving Denver a, a ton of money in taxes and that, that you know, Denver's putting it to great use for the local infrastructure. But, you know, limiting the number of licenses would really just not serve the residents well across the dreams of a lot of small business owners. I mean, I remember a few weeks ago, there was a veteran here who was excited to be a business. He had owned land forever. Um, and it would just really create a monopoly for the lucky few who, you know, and when there's no competition, uh, those three retail shops are going to have no incentive to compete on price. Uh, and that's doing the residents a huge disservice. Um, you know, in, in North Glen, there's five shops for about seven square miles. You guys have thousands and thousands of square miles. Um, and I think ultimately if three people win those licenses and they're clustered in the same little area, you know, p people out near Brighton or Watkins or uh, wherever else are still going to be forced to drive all the way to Denver because there's nothing close by. Um, so, you know, just uh, just to sum it up, I mean, Durango has, has, I think, 11 licenses for an even smaller area. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's easy enough to, to have the state weed out the bad characters if that's what you're worried about, um, or to, you know, I mean, to judge moral character with a public hearing. Uh, there's plenty of ways to do it without a, a kind of arbitrary lottery system, and I think that's going to prevent a lot of those A3 spaces that are out in the eastern parts of the county from establishing greenhouses and there's people that have owned land there forever and are really excited to get in but you know it's really gonna 
leave a, a lucky few that will become the elite and have this kind of monopoly for the first year. Um, so, you know, I'm really asking you to reconsider. You do have option three as a, as a possibility, and there, there's a lot of us, and I think I speak for a lot of people in this room when I say that I don't think that, you know, the potential business owners or the residents who are in favor of marijuana um, when showed that with their vote, you know, uh, are excited about this lottery system. I think that it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of create a, a cutthroat mentality, and it's going to leave a lot of small business owners feeling, feeling disenfranchised. So, so uh, thanks for listening, and, and I hope you'll take that into consideration. Thank you very much. Mr. Next, Waskowitz. Next, we have Don Wasner. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Dawn Wanzer. I'm at 7520 East 86th Avenue in Commerce City. Thank you, Board of Commissioners, for allowing us to put this before you. Thank you to Abel and Michael Weaver for the tremendous amount of work you guys have done to put this before you today. Um, I want to speak um, as a business, potential business perspective, also as a parent with a child with a catastrophic illness, to um, put before you and let you know that the medical marijuana industry or the marijuana industry in general is not going to go away. I was excited and very um, optimistic to hear that this was being put before you um, before December 31st. And so I ask as I speak and work as a parent advocate, seeing many, many families and residences um, that reside in Commerce City that have children with very catastrophic illnesses, the only amount of hope they have is through medicinal marijuana. So I do ask to please be sure that that ban be lifted on December 31st and allow us to have the regulations in place so that we can help our families and those that we love with catastrophic illnesses. Um, I also was doing a look uh, potentially on the um, infused product industry, and I understand the conditional use uses. Some people are very afraid of the butane and gas, some of which I'm not a fan of either. But if people choose to do an alcohol extraction, it can be easily, uh, the fumes can be easily recaptured through a distiller and also through charcoal filters. So that's part of probably some of the conditional uses that the planning division was looking at is some of those scenarios that might come before you. Um, I also wanted to talk about the terminology of the places of worship. Upon looking at the places of worship, many of them can just pop up overnight and are not always on business, normal business hours. They're usually on a Wednesday night or on a Sunday morning, which most, most businesses in the marijuana industry, some are open on Sunday, but not always. And if they are open, they're only open, you know, for a short time as far as the place of worship goes. Um, I also agree with the um, lowering of the setback from 1,000 to 100, keeping it as is, or if it could be, if the, uh, excuse me, places of worship could remove, be removed out of that terminology. Um, just want to make sure. And also, I'm not a fan of the lottery either. Um, I think there's a lot of businesses that will go into business. Colorado has done a very good job at regulating some of these businesses. And I, I say if a business follows the regulations, they pass the necessary requirements and inspections, that should, should be enough to suffice as to what kind of business they are. If they're making good relationships in the community, that should be taken into consideration. Um, so I also agree with the option number three to not have such a cap or a lottery because it would diminish a lot of people's ability to, to do what they want to do in the industry. So that's what I have to say. I want to say thank you very much for hearing us today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Moskowitz. The next person is Elena Scott. Again, please state your name and address for the record. short. <laughs> My name is Eleanor Scott, 
and I'm at 3455 West 72nd Avenue, Westminster, 8036. That is the office of the group I'm representing today, a local nonprofit organization, Westminster Area Community Awareness Action Team, and our focus is drug prevention, especially for um, children and youth. I also have been a resident of Adams County for 52 years. Um, there are some perceptions, and one, for instance, is that the legalization of marijuana will keep happening and it's going to sweep across Colorado and the nation. However, in Colorado, there are 200 counties and municipalities who have either banned marijuana establishments or have a moratorium on them. That includes Federal Heights, which in the, re in the recent election, they had um, passed um, a sales tax ballot question. They barely approved a medical marijuana business or for medical marijuana business, but they did not pass having retail stores, so therefore they can't uh, use the sales tax avenue that they passed. And when the sales tax question was passed um, on the Adams County ballot, um, people were voting for taxing um, marijuana establishments. It shouldn't have been a conclusion that that was an endorsement of approving marijuana businesses. And I have an email from a citizen who was very emphatic that that is not why they voted for this tax, and this was sent to one of you. There's also uh, another misconception that marijuana regulations will protect the health, safety, and welfare of Adams County residents through the zones and setbacks. Um, one of those zones is a, in a mile of my neighborhood and my office, and I don't believe the area, which is already low income and uh, it's very cheap property, it has access to the new light rail, will improve the area of having the businesses that are supposed to match what's already there, as well as the light rail will bring lots of new people into our uh, community who are uh, users of marijuana. And I did not hear in the staff report uh, anything very definitive about uh, how children would be protected, except maybe through setbacks from schools and so forth. And I'm not sure I heard about marijuana education. You have to realize also that the children are having use uh, of marijuana in their homes. So the more availability there will be, the more access, and when children and youth, teenagers, see less harm in marijuana use, then use eventually goes up. I'm almost done. The regular okay, use you, of marijuana. We have, we have three minutes, and if you could finish up fairly quickly, we give I some will. time to others. I will. Um, so um, I don't know that you sh have shown the impact of marijuana use in Adams County. Here is the report from the state on the impact of marijuana use by high intensity drug trafficking. And uh, I don't think that um, you should approve this today and have um, it help the economic situation in Adams County for financial gain at the expect of the children's safety and welfare. And I want the land use in Adams County not to be in conflict with federal law. And thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Next, we have Terry Robnett. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Terry Robnett. I live at 5235 Newton Street. Um, I'm confused about some of the provisions in this um, in this uh, ordinance. Um, it seems like you have, in some areas, lumped medical and retail marijuana together, and in other areas you have separated them out. Um, my concern is that there's nothing in here that um, speaks to co-location of, of facilities. The state does allow um, for uh, both stores, 
uh, cultivation and manufacturing to be able to do to provide products for both medical and recreational um, users and with a 750 foot setback between even medical and retail I don't see how this accommodates those businesses that want to serve both the recreational market and the medical market in my opinion um, patients will suffer in that scenario because the incentive is to um, go toward recreational use per, um, over um, medical marijuana. Um, I'm also concerned with the setbacks when I compare them to alcohol, and I have to wonder if um, they are equivalent to setbacks that we have established for things like microbreweries. Um, the setbacks are also measured as the crow flies from property line to property line, so potentially if you have a large um, let's say a large strip mall where um, with where you couldn't have one business on one end of the strip mall and one another business on the other end. Um, I'm particularly concerned with the cap of 10 uh, during the first year. Again, this lumps both medical and retail marijuana in together. And three um, stores, three cultivators, three will not um, be sufficient to supply the needs of both retail and medical consumers. And as you know, um, or you should recognize that the voters have quite a, have developed quite a soft spot for medical use. That was um, evidenced by the vote in um, Federal Heights, where they approved medical but voted down recreational. So I would encourage you to go farther to um, ensure that um, that facilities for medical use are included in this. And along with that, I want to know from the commissioners why we have not yet seen um, a plan for when the ban on medical will be lifted. That has to be done. It needs to be done for the voters. And if it's not being done simply because there's no financial incentive, i.e. this special marijuana sales tax, then I'm quite ashamed. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Moskowitz. Next is Craig Duncan. Again, please state your name and address for the record. My name is, excuse me, Greg Duran. Sorry, I didn't have my glasses when I wrote my name. Um, I live at 5235 Newton. And um, I uh, come from a little different place. I've been following these all the way since the very beginning of this revolution that's happening in Colorado. And there's a big misunderstanding of what we're doing here. One of the things that we're trying to do is create free enterprise in businesses here in Adams County. We're trying to create jobs. Okay, the, the, the voters have decided that this is something that works for jobs, um, i.e. 12,000 licensed people that are working in the industry in Colorado, which is a huge, huge amount of people, and Adams has none of that. These people come in here and they pay taxes, they're going to eat at the restaurants, they're going to build up the whole thing, but instead, Adams County has decided to go as restrictive as possible, which is ridiculous because because the public decides when they want a business, and they did through the vote. Said that there's no education. We provided money for education. The state is working on education. We're working on programs, working on programs through the state, through the governor's office, through the health department. Adams County is not at this alone. Quit thinking you're alone. Find people who, who want to create a business and create a greenhouse and do something fantastic and bring Adams County back to where it needs to be instead of using zoning to restrict it and do a lottery where there's a big long list of lawsuits on the lottery because it was fan handled unfairly by prohibitionists. You're doing prohibitionist things, the staff did things that are not going to work. The rest of the state is going to look at this and they're going to say, oh my God, let's not do it, Adams County. They are so restrictive. I drove by these places where you think that businesses are going to be. It's ridiculous. You don't have any ability to do that unless you have big gobs of money. You're pushing out the little guy, all these people that have a dream, that are willing to do it, that have responsibility, that want to make business in Adams County and build up Adams County where it needs to be, to build up tax, to build up education. But Instead, you're going the direction of restriction and clamping down as tight as you can for something really silly about the fear. The fear of this odor is ridiculous. I hate roses because there was roses at my grandma's funeral. You know what? I'm going to outlaw roses and I'm going to put restriction on anybody that can go roses because I hate it. 
because it reminds me of death. That's what you're doing. Total restriction on the fear of the smell and um, these businesses and what they're doing. 750 feet, 1,500 feet separations. That's ridiculous for the smell from residential. You know what we used to say? The smell of uh, manure and the smell of beets rotting. That's the smell of money. That brings in money. That brings in opportunity. That brings in jobs. And you guys are missing in huge opportunity. And if you go forward with these over restrictive, the rest of the state is going to look at and go, oh my God, I can't believe they did that because I want Adams County to be looked at as an example, not of how not to do it, but how to do it to create community and education, everybody working together. I'm actually embarrassed of what's going on here, and um, I'm going to do my best to bring that attention to everybody in the industry because this is not bringing opportunity to Adams County, it's restricting opportunity, and I'm going to bring that forward in every way I can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Moskowitz. And finally, we have Mark Panio. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Mark Panio. I live at 7149 Galapagos Street. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys and all the work you've done. I've been at three of these meetings. I know you're working hard. A little background on me. I am a disabled veteran. Got out of the military in uh, 2013, came back with my wife, immediately pursued a job so I could get health insurance as she was going through a cancer scare. Fortunately today, that's not the case, but I have spent the past year of my life dedicated to finding a way to break into this industry. I want to be that gentleman opening up. So when I see that cap of three marijuana stores, three grow facilities, three manufacturing facilities held up to a lottery, Eight hours a day, every day of the week, myself and my business partners are putting forth the effort to do this correctly. You don't invest the amount of money it takes to do this correctly and just want to see it go up on a lottery or go up and say, you can't do it now because your name wasn't drawn out of a hat. Nobody puts in the effort just to break the law. Nobody puts in the effort to watch their community around them go to hell. You do this so you can improve your community, so you can make a better life for yourself. And anybody with common sense knows that in order to do that, you have to bring people with you, unless you're just a slumlord. But there's so many regulations by the state that you can't even do that. We're here to take care of our businesses. We're here to make sure we do it properly. So no, I may not be able to be ranked with some of the already existing businesses because they've shown a track record, but I have the honor and an integrity of a U.S. veteran who's willing to do everything he can by the book to make sure he does this right, to make sure the people around him, to make sure his brothers and sisters, his veteran friends are taken care of in any way. So I just wanted to give you an idea of the type of people that are opening these businesses or looking to open in these businesses here in Adams County and put money back into the county and take care of their people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you for your service. All right. At this time, I believe we don't have anyone left on the list. Correct. Is there anyone in the audience that did not sign up that would like to make public comment at this time? Please step forward. You can come down to the front and we'll call you one by one. I think my name is on there. That's fine. We'll get you right now. Step up and please state your name and address for the record. And anyone else who still wants to speak, please come down. There's seats up front. And we'll get you in, a, in an order that you come up. My name is Carpio Caceres. I live at 2570 Westchester Drive here in un unincorporated Adams County. I, too, am a 100% uh, veteran, um, disabled veteran. Um, I don't agree with the lottery either. Um, I'd like to uh, open up a, a dispensary like the gentleman before me. I don't think that the lottery is the answer. Uh, we work hard, both uh, veterans, we work hard. We, we do things that we that we have to do in order to get our businesses to, to do things that uh, we believe is right. Uh, we worked hard to, to, to get to the places where we are, and I don't think that uh, we have to uh, sit and wait for 
somebody to draw our name out of a hat. I mean, that just ain't right. Uh, that's not what we signed up for, and I don't think that that's, that's, that's not the right way to do it. Um, that's not the way I learned in school. That's not the way businesses are supposed to be, and that just isn't the way that I don't think that this, this is the right thing to do. We need to go back and, you know, if you need, if the department, if the Adams County needs time to learn how to do applications or do it on your own time, don't, don't take away from us and say that we can't start a business because you guys can't figure out how to do applications or do whatever. You all should have done that before. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your service. Uh, next, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Puri Yanabi. I live at 5223 South Halleville. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Uh, I come to you today as a young entrepreneur. I look around the room, and I see myself as probably one of the youngest people in this room. I firsthand watched my father live the American dream built a company from the ground up with nothing. He immigrated here in the 70s with $500 in his pocket with the American dream in his heart. I'm here standing in front of you telling you that this lottery will cripple the American dream. It is completely against it. That does not serve a purpose like you will. If you saw an Aurora, one of their regulations to even be part of their lottery is you had to be a pre-existing company with, that met their, the Denver's marijuana regulations. Well, that completely nullified anybody like myself who has gone through and gotten the regulations, but I don't have a pre-existing business yet because Denver has moratoriums for till 2016. Um, Aurora, their moratorium for only existing businesses to have opened up, they allowed 25, well, they just created a monopoly because the only 25 spots that went to were to pre-existing companies with uh, marijuana licenses. I'm standing here before you telling you to please oppose the lottery, uh, go with option three. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, again, please state your name and address for the record. Hi there, my name is Robert Reginelli. I live at 2843 Gaylord Street. I want to thank you all for your hard work. Michael Weaver helped me significantly on the phone to understand what you guys are proposing, and I'm thankful for the hard work behind the scenes. A um, little bit of history about myself. I've been in this business since um, Denver allowed it originally. I was one of the first owners of a fully certified growing operation, and I also helped the Department of Revenue write their initial codes for licensing an operation of that nature. We had police touring and learning about what was going to happen, and uh, they were actually quite thrilled when they came through action. They would tell us stories about when they used to smell this stuff back in the 70s and when they were growing up, how they felt about this plant. And uh, it, was, it was enlightening to have the bridge between citizen and government um, be more connected at that point because you could see that the police officers and the code enforcers they didn't want to clamp down on this industry they were just caught on the wrong side of the coin and they felt that if we could regulate this properly we could maybe help to destroy our mutual target which is the black market I heard some comment today about the children I heard some comment today about how we're going to protect the you know the the vitality or the the good feelings of Adams County citizens that are maybe perhaps threatened by this and for good reason we prohibited it for 70 years but I think Adams County is a unique opportunity a unique opportunity to take a stand against the black market and I think it's really exciting that right now they're talking about three hundred dollars an ounce for recreational marijuana but with greenhouses and Pueblo, for instance, is going to allow almost 200 acres of greenhouses to happen next year. $50 an ounce is within reach. And at that price, we'll be able to actually put the black market out of business, but sheer economics. It's not going to be a regulatory person that has to knock on your door. It's simply going to become unaffordable to sell underground marijuana. And if you want to protect the children, that's how we do it. 
we stop people on the street from being able to make a profit from selling marijuana directly to kids. Now you have to come to a store. Now you have to show an ID. And I think that that's the right direction for Adams County to go, and I beseech you guys to make the proper choice. I'll just say this, too. I've been in the industry since we started here in Colorado, and my, I was a standalone grow operator, and my business was put out eventually as the city changed the rules that made it so we had to be a part of a dispensary. I lost ownership of my company overnight, and overnight, they also started to change the zoning setbacks, so now we were too close to a park, too close to a daycare center. Things changed rapidly. I was eventually forced into being an employee from an owner. And I think that this is a big opportunity. I'm really excited to see what you guys are proposing. And I would like you to let the small guy have a chance. I'm excited to get back in as an owner. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Kelby Cross. I live at 6132 Blackfoot Circle. And I want to thank you all for uh, taking the time to hear us this, uh, this morning. A um, little history about myself. I am hoping to start a company with my family. And it would be a family-owned and operated uh, grow and retail store. So I would like to encourage you to choose option three, because the cap at three retail stores, three uh, distributors, and uh, three grow facilities is prohibitive for anybody who's looking to break into the industry. So because with a, only three retail stores, they have to find a supplier. If somebody has to have a separate grow, they have to find somebody to sell their product. And if they're operating strictly within Adams County, it's, it would make doing business difficult to remain within Adams County for that. So a retail store will have to find a grower and a distributor outside of Adams County, and that's lost revenue. Um, I would also like to speak to the idea that legalizing marijuana will increase crime. Uh, there's a historical context with prohibition in the 1920s that uh, demonstrates that when you decriminalize a substance, that substance then becomes less destructive to a community. So when you, criminal, uh, when you decriminalize marijuana, as the gentleman before me was saying, it assists in, uh, in taking down the, uh, the black market that surrounds it. So <laughs> forgive me. Um, again, I would just like to encourage the, uh, the choosing of option three and not making decisions regarding, uh, based on fear. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, again, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Devin Vajardi, 8393 in Bowdoin. Um, I didn't prepare for this. I didn't plan on speaking. Just to tell you a little story about me, I worked a job that kind of treaded water, and every year I would not get ahead. I would just pay my rent and pay my student loans, and I would never get anywhere. Um, after this industry started here in, in the medical world, um, put some money together with brothers and sisters, and after I saw what was happening here when Arizona went into medical, I realized that having a hydroponic store would, would work. It worked here. So I moved down there and I did that, which was a dream because now I was a business owner. Um, well, then I went into the Compassion Club world, which is basically a dispensary down there. Now they don't have them anymore. They started a lottery for dispensaries down there, only allowing a certain amount per chaw, they called it. Um, they allowed 91 dispensaries, and only three of the 91 were not millionaires that opened those 91. So that's generally what happens is I went down there for opportunity, and with the lottery, it pushes everybody out again, unless you have the money. So I end up coming here, back here, basically because I love living here. I didn't really like living down there. Um, but now there's opportunity here, and I feel like I can actually do what I wanted to do originally. I'm, I'm a business owner, which I never thought I'd end up being. But I feel a lottery is just going to push me out again. 
because I saw it happen down there. I got all my paperwork ready. We did everything we had to do. And sure enough, only three out of 91 were not millionaires. I just feel like a lottery is a bad idea and it's just gonna hurt the small business owner who wants to get in and is trying to build something. And the guy that's, you know, in Highlands Ranch jumps in and they end up taking over. It's just kind of how it works. I know that's not well adequate, but uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Josh Barch. 5676 South Waco Court. A um, little history about myself. I am a current dispensary owner. Um, we've been uh, operating since 2009, um, both medical and retail, successfully and compliantly. Um, I am also opposed to the lottery system for a multitude of reasons. Um, not just that it won't let the small guy play or will only let the current uh, people that can afford it or have been in the industry play, um, but just for the threat of some sort of influence on it, as well as the limitations of um, the number of businesses to adequate, uh, adequately supply the amount of residents in, in Adams County as well as the surrounding areas that will be utilizing those um, facilities. Um, I'd like a little bit of, of clarification on how that lottery would work. Is it an algorithm? Is it literally a random drawing where you stick your hand into a hat? Um, and, 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 you know, what kind of the preemptive um, um, requirements would be to, to enter into that lottery? Obviously, there's a, a very limited number of, of real estate um, available that's going to be in any, any county that uh, allows this use. I think that kind of limits it, you know, all in, in and of, uh, of itself for the amount of businesses that will likely be able to, to operate. Um, not only is, is the zoning a problem, but obviously from a real estate standpoint, the owners of that real estate, they have to allow the use. They have to, if they're going to lease to you, they have to be okay with that. And a lot of the, the, the current areas that are available have existing businesses um, currently in them that are not looking to vacate or um, you know, open up that real estate as well. So I think just the zoning requirements limits the number of businesses adequately. I think Denver definitely set a precedence when they did their application process. And, and, and you know, as long as you meet the, the current requirements and, and, and the requirements set forth by, uh, by, by you all, I appreciate that, by the way, um, I think that uh, that definitely sets in place of, of that requirement and, and there's no need for a lottery system or of a limitation of licenses for that. So I'm, I'm suggesting um, option three as well, and I appreciate you guys being here and, and taking the time to hear us. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, I believe we're to the end of public comment. Is there anyone else that has public comment? Yes, sir. Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. My name is Nate Bullen. I reside at 8270 Clemson Lane in Westminster, Colorado. Uh, I'd like to just say really quickly, thank you for all the efforts of everyone. Uh, I would just like to say really briefly that um, we stand kind of here in this county in the situation on the threshold of being able to open the doors of many things other than just the productivity of the marijuana industry. Um, we're dusting ourselves off of a long battle of misinformation, manipulation, and a just unwarranted identifying factor that is we have made a mistake, and that mistake has been made for a very long time, and it's easy to continue making that mistake because it's easy. And you follow a tradition of patterns of people who fall in these beliefs or these categories based on all of these, whatever you want to call it, uh, the fact is, is that this is, a, this is an emerging business, an emerging industry, and it has its place here in our country. And we have the potential, with my generation at least, to undo some of the damage that's been done financially, economically, socially. And you know, we want to talk about the welfare of children and our communities and things like that. A lot of those have been affected because of the, you know, the, the opposition that we're at with this industry. You know, we want to take that away. This, this uh, substance can be used to treat cancers, Alzheimer's, the, the list goes on. It's not prudent for someone who doesn't know anything about it to continue to be against it because of what they've been told, of what they've been taught. This has the chance to be able to revitalize communities, uh, families, individuals, the list goes on. It's not something that I think is a very easy call to make by any means, but it is one that 
does carry a lot of weight. And I think it's very important for everybody who has a deciding factor in this to take that in because whether you like cannabis or not, it has its place almost in every facet, in every family, in every individual. And we can either make that negative or we can make that positive. We have influences from other countries like cartels ever growing stronger every day here in this country. And we have an ability to take some of that financial, uh, that, that, that revenue they're able to generate away from them and continue to even battle that entity as something that we could provide as funding to do so. Um, we have the ability to do a lot of things in which we have the freedom to modify it and uh, retrofit it to how it could work. It's just a matter of being able to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to make a comment? Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Trevor McGarvey. My address is 9113 East Chenango. I'm not a resident of Adams County. Um, my comment is strictly practical and limited to the application and the licensing process. I'm a marijuana consultant and I have worked on licenses in every state basically that has recently released a competitive medical marijuana application. And I just want to kind of break reality. Um, if you're going to limit the amount of licenses, you're going to get sued whether you do a competitive application or whether you do a lottery. And I think that's been demonstrated out here. Somebody's not going to be happy. Uh, the recent states that have done competitive applications have judged them based on financial resources, uh, operating plans, you know, benefits to the community, your security plan. So there's a way that Adams County can create this kind of board and go back and judge these applications based on merit. Uh, it's not perfect and no state has done it perfectly, but the option is the lottery, which obviously people aren't happy with. And I can tell you at least one of those lottery members that does not get an application will have the resources to sue the county, just as one that doesn't get a competitive license application process will sue the county. So it might be an easier position to defend as a lottery, but you know, that's, I'm not saying it's an easy decision. I'm just saying there is ways that Adams County can structure an application so that they can judge things. Your med application will take care of a background check and kind of code things, things like that. But if you guys want to go more in depth, uh, I would look at the applications in Illinois is the most comprehensive one. And I don't think you'd go that far. Another factor you have to kind of consider is do you have the resources as a county to judge these applications? So I, I don't have an opinion either way. I just wanted to let you guys know there is a competitive application process. There's templates you can go by. Um, and the lottery exists. If you're going to use a lottery, I would probably think about raising the cap, you know, just as, as a practical matter. Um, and that's all I have. But I heard everyone addressing the lottery, and I just want you guys to know there are different things you can do. Uh, as a commission, and I guess if option one is adopting everything with the lottery as is, didn't look like the lottery has been established. So I think scenario 14 is doable, and I understand the limitation on business licenses for the first year, but you kind of got to work that with being fair to the people who want to get involved. So I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. All right. So I think there are some clarifications that we need for up front and I think one of the questions that was asked was the clarification on this lottery and what that means is there someone who can answer that question yes commissioner the uh, proposal for the lottery system uh, is not to have any um, pre-existing conditions to apply for example we're not asking that you have your current license holder we're not asking that you meet financial uh, surety or compliance um, in fact, what we're saying is we want your name, your contact information, what type of business you would like to operate that is thrown into the lottery. If your name is selected from the lottery, the, based on the uh, cap we're recommending, we would select those folks, first come, first serve, the rest would be sort of on a waiting list. Um, and if you're selected, you would then proceed to submit for your state license and for your county permits. Uh, you would have six months once your name is selected to actually secure your license and secure an approved building permit or changing use permit um, and then you may go forward if you fail to secure all of those things within that six months then we would go to that wait list the next uh, name that was pulled 
um, and they may begin that process. We're only re recommending this process for the first year um, as that's the um, same recommendation for the cap is for the first year. Uh, the board could consider uh, alternative um, numbers or caps or processes um, either now or in the future. Um, we can also uh, review again the licensing authority um, and move forward in that direction. Uh, but the staff does feel strongly that there should be a process in place in order to manage the applications. Um, just by matter of comparison, we've probably received 50 to 60 calls on marijuana establishments. We've held probably two to three uh, voluntary meetings with folks that wanted to talk about a few properties. We've received phone calls from realtors and brokers that wanted to know if their client's property was eligible for marijuana. The sheer volume of having you know, 50 possible folks interested in this would absolutely consume the planning department's resources for about two months. And so it's something that would not be fair to the industry, would not be fair to the other customers or the public that the department serves. And for those reasons, we strongly believe there should be some type of mechanism to limit the number of folks that can apply for these um, permits uh, for the first year so we can get up and running, our processes ironed out, and um, if necessary, having an additional licensing process to um, evaluate potential users in the future. Okay, I think, do we have any questions? Do you have some questions? Yeah, I, I, I was reading on the, you know, in the regulations, it says, um, you know, under 4-18B, it says prior to the operation of any marijuana establishment, a license must be obtained from the state of Colorado, which is what you said, and, and either a building permit or change in use permit must be obtained from Adams County as applicable. Well, I, I've never seen, or this is the first time I've heard of this, you know, we're going to give you six months to go find your license, to get your license, you know, scenario. What's, where's that coming from? Um, that would be uh, something that we are recommending as part of the application submittal process, which includes the lottery system. But it's not in the regs. It is not in the regs. It would be an application process and system, which is um, typically held administratively. If the board feels um, that it should be in the regulations, we can adopt it there as well. I mean, I, I guess I just kind of assumed, maybe that was wrong, but that's why I went back and looked at the, at the, the reg itself, that, um, that you would have to obtain a license before you could even apply, you know. I mean, uh, w w I, I guess I'm not familiar enough with, with what other, other jurisdictions do, you know. Can you enlighten yeah. me on that? Commissioner, our, our proposal is that it, you would not have to have a, sti a state license before you can apply to the county as part of the proposed lottery system. In fact, um, uh, we believe um, you should wait until your name is selected out of the lottery system to apply to the state and the county. The state um, could take as much as 90 days to review and issue a license. Our building permit process can vary depending on the complexity of the site and renovation work that may or may not be necessary. That could range from two weeks to six weeks. Um, there are some properties that may be eligible for rezoning as we heard today to either an A3 zone district or an I1, I2, I3 zone district which would require a three month process. Given all of those things, we are recommending that six month window in order for, for them to secure all of their entitlements. That, that, that six month window is not adherent in these documents. We're not adopting that today. That's what you told me. We're not adopting a six month window today. Uh, the, what, what I suggested is that the six month window is part of the application process, which can be creative administratively. If the Board of County Commissioners wants to include that in the regulations, I, I, I'm not we suggesting we put today. it in the regulations. I'm just pointing out that it's not there. I don't want to put it in there necessarily um, but you know frankly a side concern you know uh, not necessarily about this issue but about everything else is that generally speaking you know if we're going to have a particular procedure like you just outlined here you know I think that's something that the board should adopt and to adopt additional regulations um, and time frames and everything else on top of that you know um, seems to be you know, onerous that's just an observation but it's not part of these regulations, so it's kind of a moot point.
Do you have more, more questions? Commissioner? So I guess I'm, uh, I'm a little confused because let me just say this. We, we've had a lot of testimony here today, and I don't think that we've heard extreme happiness from anybody. Um, I don't think anybody's come up here and said, you know, this is great. We just want to do this. I've heard comments like, you know, you're only doing it for the money. I would point out that we are not doing it for the money. Um, if you look at actually what we're proposing, especially in the cap, the only tax that we can collect is on the retail, not, and that's only three of the 10. There is no excise tax on any of the rest. So I think that's a misconception that we're only in it for the money. Um, the other comment, which is contradictory, that I heard was, um, you're missing the gravy train or you're missing the economic boom that you could get out of this. So either we're doing it for the money or we're not doing it for the money. I think there's been two messages sent to us today. Um, I will say that you know, to, there was a comment about whether or not we are just um, jumping into this without consideration. And I will say that marijuana has been around for a very long time. It's been around, I think that we've pointed that out um, through our presentation about just how long this has been around. And I would point out that we have not in any way just jumped into anything. Um, we have taken careful consideration. Our staff has taken careful consideration. We have been outreaching. We have talked to numerous people. Now, I will tell you this. We have not made everyone we've talked to the happiest camper on earth. Um, this isn't something that we wanted to go out and say, you know, this is an industry that we're going to, you know, just open the doors and let everybody come in and, and everybody's going to be kumbaya and we're going to be flush with money. Um, this is not going to solve our problems in Adams County. It's not going to solve our jobs problems. It's not going to solve our homeless problem. It's not going to solve our financial problems for the county. Um, it's another mechanism just like any other industry or any other business to be a contributor to this community. Um, we talked about the black market. Do we want to put the black market out of business? Absolutely we do. But we also have to take into the considerations that we heard from our staff that if we open up the floodgates, do we have the resources within the county to manage that? And I think you heard quite clearly that, you know, just from what we've seen through our talks, we don't have that kind of um, resources in Adams County to handle something like that. So we have to be considerate about how we do this. I, we talked about the lottery system and whether it's fair and whether my brothers from the, uh, the, the vets can open up and, and be considered. I would say this, that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think that the, the opportunity in Adams County is open to anybody. It doesn't have to be just retail marijuana. The industry needs other industries to support them. And I would strongly consider anyone in this room that has a business consideration, look at what these businesses are going to need. What, what are the supporting industries that need to go along with these businesses? Um, I'm not trying to put you off or try to say, you know, this is not for you or this is for you. What I'm trying to say is this is something that we have taken careful, careful consideration to. Are we going to be the, the end all say all to this? Absolutely not. I think the, the legislator is going to be determining more regulations throughout the year. I think other circumstances are gonna come up. I think even as commissioners, if this goes you know through, we're going to have to consider what we do with medical. Um, it's going to be something that we discuss. Uh, I can't guarantee where this goes, but I do want you to know that I appreciate everybody's comment. I know there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of beliefs on both sides. And to sit here and take all this in, I think that's you know what an elected official is, is supposed to do. And to make those hard decisions is what an elected official is supposed to do. And we are going to do that. Uh, I would ask, though, that you give us some a minute i would ask that we could go into executive session for a very short time um, before we come back out and make any other final comments would that be for purposes of receiving legal advice? 
is that for purposes of receiving the Levi's? That yes. would be pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 246-4024-B for the purpose of receiving legal advice. Okay. Do I have a motion? If you have a concern, yeah. So, sec or, so moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. And, and how long do you plan on that us? That being said, I would say we need about five or ten minutes and just to speak with our county manager or county attorney. Uh, thank you. We'll be recessed. Sorry. Thank you. We will come out of executive session at this time. Uh, at this time, I'll open it up for comments from the commissioners. Do we have comments that the commissioners would like to make? Yeah, I, I actually do have a comment. I'm going to make a list here. Um, Alaska, 1998. Arizona, 2010. California, 1996. Colorado, 2000. Connecticut, 2012. D.C., 2010. Delaware, 2011, Hawaii, 2000, Illinois, 2013, Maine, 1999, Maryland, 2014, Massachusetts, 2012, Michigan, 2008, Minnesota, 2014, Montana, 2004, Nevada, 2000, New Hampshire, 2013, New Jersey, 2010, New Mexico, 2007, New York, 2014, Oregon, 1998, Rhode Island, 2006, Vermont, 2004, Washington, 1998. Um, and there are four other states that will be putting uh, marijuana on their ballot. To say this is a new industry is totally wrong. It's been in process since 1996. Colorado chose in 2012 to put retail marijuana on the Constitution, the state Constitution. So that gives people the constitutional right to have marijuana, retail marijuana. It's an opportunity for an American dream of owning a business and succeeding. And I can't deny that. I raised my hand when I swore, was sworn into office to uphold not only the US Constitution, but also the Colorado State Constitution. And I'm a strong believer in local control. So I really believe that the laws of Colorado are upheld above the United States federal government. I don't believe that the federal government should be telling us what we can do, what we can't do in certain situations, and this is one of them. When people talk about the fact that it's a dangerous drug, I have to make a comment at the fact that becoming addicted to marijuana is only 9%. Becoming addicted to cigarettes is 30 percent. And cigarettes kill. It's known fact. It causes cancer. People die. It shortens their lives. We have these kind of conversations, but we don't have a conversations about vapes. The high school students are now starting to use vapes. And that in itself causes heart disease with the nicotine that's going into this heart. And we also don't mention the fact of the drugs that are actually in our medicine cabinet. Every 19 minutes, there's a prescription drug overdose every 19 minutes. And this is in every household in America. So I will be supporting, obviously, the, the use. Um, I also have to ask every, and this is one of the situations when, when you're an elected official. Um, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And I've always been told when you get both sides angry at you, then most likely you're doing the right thing. So I ask people to please be patient. Let's wait and see how this works. Yes, we have to go at it slowly. And that's why I support having the 10, because we have to go at this slowly. To say that Adams County has 
pushed forward fast in regards to this is totally wrong. Our staff has been working on this for two years on, on these regulations. And I want to thank that staff for working on it because it was totally new to them. They actually had to do a lot of research and a lot of information on that. But when you have 23 states, that's almost half of the 50 states we have in America. You've got four more that are going. It's just a matter of time before the federal government catches up and realizes that the 70-year year, 70 year prohibition has been wrong. So I will be supporting this. Um, and as soon as the commissioners are ready, I'll be making the motion. OK. Any other comments? No other comments. Do we have a motion? Yes, I move for the approval of PLN 2014-00033 Marijuana Regulations Amendment uh, with option number one. I move for its approval. I think there's a, Is there anything more that a I correction that, that needs to be. The three recommended findings of fact. Yes, thank you. And that is the staff's recommendation, right? Right. Do we have a second? I will, oh, first I want to make a, a comment and I want to say that, you know, for everyone to come out here and um, make their opinions known, I know that there's going to be some discussion after this and I know that there's going to be some um, opinions made, made either publicly or privately with, with all of us. And I will say this, that, you know, we have tried our very, very best to come out here and be open, honest, transparent, and do everything we can in this county, knowing that this is new for this county, um, not for the municipalities within this county, but for the county itself. And to make this step is a huge commitment on everybody on this panel and also in the in the community now there are opportunities to change there are opportunities to do other things and we will most likely be looking at this in the near future that being said i will second the motion commissioner henry yes commissioner tedesco yes commissioner hansen no nope. okay thank you very much everyone we appreciate your time that being said we are